This man has just been given a new lease on life. He's Canada's first face transplant recipient. It took 30 hours of surgery and four years of preparation. And this spring, thanks to a new protocol by Transplant Quebec, a donor was found. In January 2011, Maurice, whose last name we've agreed to withhold, was in a hunting accident. Four reconstructive surgeries later, Maurice is still disfigured and in chronic pain. In 2014, Dr. Borsuk proposes something extraordinary, a face transplant. The surgery is complex and filled with risks. Dr. Daniel Borsuk heads the team of surgeons who performed the operation, and he understands the pitfalls. The taux de succès, c'est pas 100%. Il y a des risques très, très, très graves qui sont associés avec ces genres de chirurgie. On a eu une longue discussion, moi, lui et sa femme. Nine surgeons, 15 specialists and a small army of nurses assisted Dr. Borsuk during the operation. The transplant doesn't just involve the skin. It's almost the entire face, including the nose and its cartilage, the jawbones and teeth. The doctors who performed the surgery say the operation was a complete success, going far beyond their expectations. Maurice spent two months in hospital recovering. Now he's in a specialized facility starting rehabilitation. Over the next nine months, Maurice should regain control of his jaw and the feeling in his new face. Charles Tissère, CBC News, Montreal. In listening to Charles Tissière, the host of Découverte on Radio Canada, and his reporting uh, on Maurice, and in that story, you met Daniel Borshak, Dr. Daniel Borshak. I absolutely have, have to say, the plastic surgeon who headed the team who performed that incredible operation. We have so many more questions. So, Dr. Borsuk, my guest this morning, and thank you for being in. Number one, congratulations, bravo. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heather. It's, it's really been something to see this morning as we've reported on. I want to look at some pictures, number one, of Maurice, number, uh, first of all. So we see what was the situation. We've been talking about how he was injured in a hunting accident in 2011, had had reconstructive surgeries, but was still disfigured and in chronic pain. And yet, right. what gave you the confidence to jump to, let us try a facial transplant? Well, in fact, uh, I had been a participant in a face transplant already in Baltimore with uh, Ed Dr. Ed Rodriguez at the shock trauma unit in 2012. And we had a very similar patient, uh, Richard Norris, who we were able to do that face transplant for. And at the time, it was the most extensive face transplant in the world. So when I came back to University of Montreal, you know, we, we wanted to set up this program where we can offer patients what's called a vascularized composite allotransplant. So a transplant of either arms or faces, non-solid organ. And so we started the project back then before I had even met Maurice. And then one day I see a lot of these patients, they come and he came in the door and he looked so much like Richard. He had such a similar story and he had no hope. And when you see someone with no hope, you just, well, you gotta try to do something. And so I said, listen, there's a, there's a distinct possibility that this might not go well, but I have a great team. Uh, I have confidence that we can do this face transplant for you. And when I offered that to him and his wife, they both started crying. It was the first time they'd heard someone who had offered them a little bit of hope. And that's the idea with these transplants. It's to offer people hope who have none otherwise. That's amazing. Although you, you do raise right away the stakes. There is no plan B in something like this, is there? Well, there is, in fact, plan B, C, D. We have a lot of backup plans. But, but once you're into like the surgery... We like to treat this at, there is, there is no plan B. Right. Pardon me? Once you're into the surgery... Oh, once you're into the surgery, there's, there's a point of no return. Right. Uh, where we know that we are going to be moving forward, and so there is no plan B at that point. No. Despite that, of course, you can understand why I'd want to go ahead. And, and it was something that you, you raised with him that we're just hearing about today. But the preparation for this, four years to get ready to the point of, of operating, what were you planning and what were you going through with him at that time? Well, there's, there's two sides. There's the, well, three sides, really. There's, the res there's Maurice. It's how to prepare him psychologically and physically. There's also the side of the donation, is working with our, our incredible organization called Transplant Quebec in order to be able to approach families for this type of donation. 
And then there's the actual medical and surgical team, and how do we prepare? So for over two years, we were practicing in the cadaver lab doing these face transplants. And we were trying to figure out every step of the way, what we can do and what's been done in the past, and how we can improve on each step. So this has been done 40 times in the world. This isn't a new surgery, but the idea is to keep making it better. So luckily, I've had incredible mentors that I was able to pass ideas off with and try to improve on each step of the way. And so we employed a bunch of new types of technologies and innovative practices during these practices over the past two years to make sure that we can give Maurice the best result possible. Practicing on cadavers, Dr. and then the moment surgery. comes when an, an appropriate donor, unfortunately, someone passes away, but your donor has arrived. What's that moment for you? Like, here it is. It's, um, well, first of all, you, you pass on the donor, but to be able, for a donor to be in the worst day of their, the family, to be in the worst day of their life and then accept to do this type of donation, it's the most incredible act of generosity that you can imagine. So that really has to be noted, that this family was incredible to do that type of donation. Um, and then on our side of it, it's, you know, we had been planning, we have a, a team coordinator who has had an entire call list of everyone has to speak to, hundreds of people that we had to get organized to be able to do the surgery with, you know, within 48 hour lead time. We're going to look at some of the images of the surgery, and in uh, Charles' report, uh, he, he told us, and you talked to him, about how it went even better than you expected. But 30 hours in your big surgical team, give us your insight of uh, how it was going in there over that extreme, extremely long period of time. Well, you know, as we practice uh, and as I, we, we discuss with the team, there's always going to be roadblocks. Things are going to happen during the procedure, and we have to be ready to avert any crises and to keep moving forward. You know, we wanted to make sure that all the organs were still going to be okay to be procured for other recipients, so we wouldn't want to harm any other p uh, potential recipients of the organs. We wanted to make sure that Maurice was doing well. So we worked on everything that's going to happen, possibly is going to happen, we would have a way to get around it. If there's problems with the arteries, problems with the nerves, problems with the bones, how we're going to be able to work through those problems. And by planning over years, you know, we're able to offer the patient the least amount of risks and to really work through those 30 hours. So as, as I think Danny Lemieux, the reporter for CBC, how he was saying, it was, it was like a ballet, the way everything was just falling into place, the timing of the, because there's two rooms at the same time. The timing of the donor room, the timing of the recipient room, to get everything coordinated, and it worked. It, it worked exactly how we had planned. So it, it, there wasn't as much stress as one might uh, assume. As, given what you're doing, because to be clear, it's not just tissue. It's, it's nose and everything, is it not? You have to do everything. It's everything. That's amazing. That's I want right. to bring it's, up some it's pictures. the nose, the lips. Yeah. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Nose, lips. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, yeah, it's the nose, the lips, the upper jaw, the, the bony part of the orbits under the eyes and the lower jaws, all the teeth, and, of course, all the skin muscles and nerves. So it all wow. comes off as one unit. So if we look at uh, Maurice side by side, what he used to look like and what he looks like now, when he saw himself for the first time, what was that moment? It was a spiritual moment. Um, there's, it's rare times in your life where you, you see the magnitude of your work and what people helping people looks like. And when he looked in the mirror for the first time, and I, I get choked up when I think about it, and everyone in the room, it was this incredible experience. You see, it's like seeing a child looking in the mirror for the first time and, and touching his new nose and his new lips. It was, it was the most uplifting experience I think I'd had ever experienced. I have a beautiful picture of you holding his hand in the gurney too. You must have a bond with this man for life. What does his future look like, Dr. Borsak? Yeah. Well, you know, the first year is quite difficult. There's a lot of uh, challenges that he has to overcome, relearning to use the muscles you know, that's going to take some time. The nerves grow at around a one millimeter a day, and so we're only four months out. It's going to take another eight months or so before he can actively move, move his lips and smile better. He's starting to smile, but to, to have a normal smile and speech. So he has a lot of rehabilitation to go through, but this is the most courageous and the nicest man that you could meet. So he's just, he's just trucking through. He's, he's amazing. The day when you get to see that first smile, that'll be another important milestone for you. Uh, thank you for the time, for and sure. congratulations to you on your team. Thank you for explaining this all to us. What an extraordinary moment for you and everyone involved. Thank you so much.